Hello friends, this video on Organic Chemistry Basic Part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we have used so many organic compounds. We have talked about the functional group. We have talked about different kinds of organic compound. We have used also so many organic compounds, but we are confused, right? Why uh, something is called cyclobutane, something is called cyclopropane, something is called methanoic acid, something is called isobutyl alcohol. So there has to be some way to name organic compound. Also, there are so many millions and millions of organic compound you can't just remember, right? So there are two ways to name organic compound: common name and IUPAC name. This is very similar to your life. For example, most of us has two names. In home, they call us something like Sunny, Bunty, or I can, there can be some four funny names in the house, um, Chintu, there are so many names right which we use in, the, in our life or Lalu, there are so many names but the official name is different, no? official name is a little different, it is Shobhet or it is Fisher, they are good names actually, no? Utkarsh or it can be John. It can be Ronald. I mean, what I'm saying is, this is my personal home name or pet name, and this is my official name. So most of the most of you or most of us have two names, right? One is uh, the one which our parents and our family call us, and one is which our uh, I mean, normally friends and uh, in the colleagues call us. Right. Similarly, organic compound also has common names in IUPAC name. So, and why we have IUPAC name even common name, I'll tell you, there is a reason for this. See, earlier they were, see, it is not that organic chemistry came in, in one fine day. It took years to, to you know, grow. As I told in 1780, this thing started when they um, differentiated or classified compounds into organic and inorganic compounds where organic is something which you derive from plants and animals and inorganic is something which you derive from minerals, right? And gradually they keep on adding new new compounds. So that time there are few compounds, maybe in 1780 there was 5 organic compounds, then it became 10, then 20 and 30, since the number of compounds were limited. So the names, the scientist who found it, he or she gave the name most of the time or the common name were there. I mean, there were, some, there were very few compounds, so it was okay to have common name. For example, if you see, uh, acetic acid is a common name because there were only few compounds that time, right? Phenol is also one common name. For example, for this, it is called phenol. There were very only few. This was called phenols, and there's something called acetic acid. So this is very, very, I mean, since the number of uh, compounds were limited, so common names were used. You know, scientists used to give some names and those names were funny. But then what happened were this number increased from 30 to let's suppose 1000, then 10,000, the lakhs, 10 lakhs, because the science advanced and the organic chemistry advanced a lot. More and more organic compounds were synthesized. And it was very, very difficult to give names to one lakh of any compound. Nobody can remember, right? So there, then this uh, body IUPAC, they met and they gave a name. In fact, not the name, but the naming convention. This IUPAC is nothing but International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. And they met in uh, Geneva, I think, yeah, 1979, 1993. Two times they have recommended and they gave a convention. They gave a convention to name a organic compound. So with that, you can easily find just given the example acetic acid, you have to remember that acetic acid is CH3COH. There is no uh, scientific way to tell that acetic acid is this. You have to just remember. For example, you remember your teacher's face. There is no scientific way to remember. For example, but what 25, there is a scientific way. If you know 2 and if you know 5, there is a way you can tell it is 25. Correct. So there, there are, since the number was too much, the scientific way was decipher or uh, uh, was found or recommended by IUPAC in 1979-1993 and that is now generally used to name a organic compound. So 
we will talk about the scientific or iupac name so iupac name it, it, they gave the uh, recommendations to name aliphatic hydrocarbons without functional group that is the straight one uh, aliphatic hydrocarbons without functional group but this time the branch one so there are different uh, ways to name it so i'm just uh, putting in different uh, columns again aliphatic hydrocarbons but this time with functional groups again aliphatic carbon with more than uh, one functional group like, sorry it's uh, more than one similar functional group and here more than one different functional group so these are with functional groups these are without functional groups right and then for alicylic Ali uh, cyclic compounds. So there are different ways. There are different, I and mean, each of these uh, rules applies to different kind of compound. The first thing we have to find is whether the compound we're talking about is the straight. Spelling is wrong. Uh, branched, or it has a functional group, or it doesn't have functional group. Whether it has functional group, whether it is, uh, it has more than one functional group. So depending on that, will apply different rules. The first rule is for an aliphatic hydrocarbon without functional group and that is for straight. This is for straight. For a straight chain without any branch. Please note, this is the first rule for a straight chain without any branch. So this, for this you have to just understand something called word root and suffix. So word root is nothing but the number of carbon atoms. And suffix is nothing but saturation, whether it's a single bond, double bond, or triple bond. So there's only one carbon atom. Please note, understand this, this is very critical here. If it is one carbon, we'll use the word meth. Two carbon, we'll use the word eth. Three carbon, pro. Four, bute. Five, pent. Six, hex. Seven, hept. Eight, oct. Nine, non. Ten, dec. Please remember this. Meth, eth, pro, bute, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, dec. Right? Once again, 1 carbon meth, 2 carbon eth, 3 pro, 4 bute, 5 pent, 6 hex, 7 hep, 8 oct, 9 non, 10 dec. And for saturation, if it is totally saturated, use the word ain. If it is, has double bond, we'll use ein. If it is triple bond, we'll use ein. For example, I showed you methane. Why meth? It has 1 carbon only. So, meth. All saturation. All saturated because there is no double bond. If you see methane, this is something like this. Is there any double bond? No. So the suffix will be in. How many carbon? One. So we'll add meth for the number of carbon and in is the suffix because it has no double bond. So it becomes methane. Let's example C2H6. C2H6, if you draw the structure, given the structure, you should be able to find the name. This is my C2H6. How many carbon? 2. For 2 we have what? Eth. So let's write the word Eth. First. Is there any double bond? No. For saturation it is ain. So it is ain. Ethane. So this is ethane. Similarly, propane. Let's do this. Propane it is C3H8. So there are 3 carbon and 8 hydrogen. This is the structure of propane. And let's find out what is the name of this. How many carbon? 3. 3 carbon is what? Pro. So put the word pro. All saturated, yes. So in. So it is propane. Similarly, you can have 4 carbon butane, 5 carbon pentane, 6 carbon hexane, 7 is heptane, 8 is octane, 9 is nonane, 10 is decane, and then 20 is icosane. This is all you can ignore now, but at least till 10 you should. Right? These were all saturated. You can take more examples. Let's, let, let's take uh, uh, C. This guy double bond CH2. Let's find the name of this. How many double? How many carbon? Two. So it word will be there. So let's write it here. Double bond. Yes. There is double bond for E. Double bond is E. It will be E. So it is ethene. Let's take one more uh, with a triple bond here. So let me take triple bond here from hydrogen. Let me try to find the name of this. How many carbon? Two. Again, eth. Triple bond, wine, ein. This is ethine. Very easy. 
See, just by looking at the structure, we can tell the name of the compound. Correct. And this rule is applicable only for straight chain. Please note, this is the first step. So we are learning only for the straight chain. Straight chain. You have to. You are bothered only about two things. One is the number of carbon atoms that gives the word root, and then saturation, which gives the word suffix. You write the word root, write the suffix. That's all. Here, the word root is it. Suffix is in because it has double bond, so it is ethene. Correct. Here, double bond, uh, two carbon eth, triple bond ine, ethine. Correct. Very easy. So this is how you name an aliphatic compound without functional group. Let's take some more example here. So let's take uh, this guy here. CH three, C triple bond, CH. So how many carbon atoms? One, two, three. So it be pro, and then triple bond, wine. This is propine. Let's take one more example. CS three, CS two, CS two, CS two. C triple bond C H. How many carbon atoms? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six is what hex. So it is hex triple bond I. Now there is a confusion here. What? See this triple bond could happen here also. So in that case, I'll just show you. Right? This is one possible scenario. One, two, three. So in this case. What will be the name of this? Going by that, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it will be hex and triple bond. So I. To differentiate between these, what we do? We do a numbering. We'll give the lowest number to. We'll start from either of the end to make sure the lowest one is given to triple bond. So we can start from here. But if you start from here, let me change the color. So we start from here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. Double bond gets number five. That is not good. So we'll start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. Correct. So with this, a double bond is with first carbon. So it is hex one i. So in this case, again we'll start from here. Why? Because if we start from left to right, this double bond will get again the number a higher number. In this case, we're getting only second number. This will be hex two i. Correct. Hope you understand the difference here. So, if, if it has, uh, see, in this case, it's all one and same. The carbon atom is here or here, right? Because only three uh, carbon atoms. But in case of long chains, the placement of triple bond, double bond matters. So, there we can you can specify the position of the double bond or triple bond. Correct. Let's take one more. CS two, sorry, CS three, CS two, CS double bond CS two. So what is the number of carbon? One, two, three, four. Four is but, so it will be but, and it is double bond, so it will be in. But the num again, this double bond could happen here or here. So better I just name it one, two, three, four. Why from back? Because uh, this will give a lower number to here. So this is but one in. Correct. Let's take one more here. C H three C H double bond C H C H three. Right. So in this case, again four carbon. So it is but double bond. So in the carbon position now. Now we can number from here one, two, three, four. Why? Because if we number from here, we are getting in the second position. We number from here, we are getting in third position. So we'll always consider the lowest number. So we'll take u to e. Okay, this will be u. You'll have to lower uh, number this chain, the straight chain, in such a way that the double bond gets the lowest number. Correct. So with this, we can name any aliphatic hydrocarbon without any functional group, and there is straight chain. There is no branch chain now. Please note, this is only for straight chains. Now, before we move into 
the branch chain, let's understand the alkyl group because alkyl group is something that's attached as a um, hydrocarbon. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.